Hi there, welcome to Camera Match. Uh, we're going to take uh, a scene, uh, a video scene, and uh, try to figure out how to put a 3D object into it. Now, this is going to be a two part tutorial. The first part will be in Max, the second part will be in After Effects. Um, let's do the Max part first. I've take a, took a video shot, 720 by 480 resolution, and um, I sort of set it up in a location that had some good points. So you can see I've got some nice crisp geometry that I'll easily be able to make in 3D. So I've got a box here that is 9 feet tall by 31 and 3 quarters inches deep. This wall here is 82 inches wide. And this other wall is also 9 feet tall. And uh, the red box is 13 by 31. It's 35 inches from the ceiling and 6 and a quarter inches from the corner. So in Max, I've built this. This is really easy. Um, if you've got some basic max geometry, you should be able to build this no problem. You can see my first wall here is 9 feet tall, so it's 108, um, 31.75, 31 and 3 quarters inches deep. Uh, my orange box is 82 inches wide, and that gives me my separation for my double doors. Then my green wall here is also 9 feet tall, and I used some, uh, I went to create helpers and standard and tape measure. And I measured down from here to 35 inches um, and six and a quarter inches in. And uh, this little pink box is 13 by uh, 31. So really simple. I got a plane on the ground. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, put on some cam points. So make sure that you turn on your 3D snap, the three with the magnet, and right click on it. Make sure that vertex is clicked, not grid points, only vertex. Okay, we want to snap these camera points right to the vertex points of our geometry. Uh, then I'm going to go to the create helpers, okay, the little tape measure, and drop down from standard and go to camera match and cam point. Now you have to know um, the order. You have to pick an order. It's whatever order you want. Just make sure you don't forget it. I'm going to uh, pick an order and I'm going to go to the top and then bottom. So what I'm doing is I'm making points and uh, there's my next two points. And top and bottom again, next two points. And then I'm going to go clockwise around this pink box. Now, when you're trying to figure out which points you want to use, you want to make sure you have at least two points on the x-axis, two on the y, and two on the z. So my x-axis points are here, 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 right? And, um, and these four are all on the same x-axis. On the y-axis, I have these two points. Okay, so I have some Y variation. And then on the Z, of course, since this is my ground plane, I've got anything that's up top is all on the Z, Z axis. And that provides me with enough information for the computer to, to figure it all out. Now, once I go that far, I'm just going to turn on a wireframe for a second. And uh, I'm going to go to Views, Viewport Background. Okay, now what you want to do is go to Files, and you want to go and find your video that you want to use. Okay and uh, turn on display background. Lock zoom pan is a good idea because if you use any uh, navigation tools to zoom in, you don't want your video to move with it. Um, and at this point, you really don't want to mess around with your geometry at all, right? Everything should be pretty much done. And also turn on animate background if you're using an animated uh, a video file, and then okay. So beautiful. There I've got my, uh, my video that I can see, and uh, that's, that's pretty good. Next thing I want to do is uh, go to my utilities, which is the hammer, and camera match utility. And you can see here I've got a list of my cam points. Now what I want to do is assign positions for all of them. So I'm going to turn on assign position and select camera point one. And now I have to remember my order. So there's my first point. And then point two, my second point is right there. And that's going to be 108 inches. And point three is this corner. And point four is this corner right down here. And I intentionally left this door open just so I could see that corner. Uh, point five, I can't quite see, but no, it's right there. That'll be good enough. Point six is right down here. And then I went clockwise from the left. So one, two, three, and four. Awesome. And then uh, I can turn off assigned position and click on create camera. This builds a camera and it figures it out for you. Um, now, if I hit the C key on my keyboard, look at that. My geometry is all almost perfectly lined up to where um, uh, to where everything else is supposed to be. So 
it's created a virtual camera in almost identical spot, space. Um, just so you can see, I'm going to turn on, um, I'm turn on shaded, right? So we can see where my stuff is. It's pretty good. And I'm just going to set a ball down for a moment here. I'm going to, I'm going to make a piece of geometry. I'm going to make a sphere. There it is. And I'll just move it up a bit. Now, don't worry, our sphere won't look uh, exactly right. Oh, I'm on 3D snap. I'm going to turn that off. Uh, there's my there's my sphere. Okay. Now, when I render this, it's not going to show up yet. So what I want to do is go to rendering and uh, environment. And uh, where it says environment map, I want to make sure that this renders with the environment, at least for now, just so I can check it out. So turn on bitmap and uh, go pick the same video. Now when I render, it's going to show that video in the background. Now, of course, if I render it, just so you can see, well, I also see all my ugly geometry, and I, I don't want to see that geometry. So what I want to do is I'm going to apply matte shadow materials to these. So I'm just going to open up the material editor, and I'm going to take my first material here, where it says standard. I'm going to change that to matte shadow. Uh, there it is. Now matte shadow is invisible, but it can receive alpha, or it can receive shadows. Um, that's checked off. So I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to slap this onto my ground, and onto my Let's see under there, and onto my orange one, and onto my green one, and onto my pink one. There we go. So everything is alpha. So now when I render, if you take a look here, uh, I'll try rendering again. <clears throat> everything disappears. There's my ball there. Okay, now that's pretty good. Now, of course, the thing that you want, um, if you're going to put a, uh, an object in your scene, um, like the ball, it, it, it needs a shadow um, in order for it to look right. So... I'm going to very quickly just create a light. I'll do a target light. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to go make a standard light here, target spot, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll make a complete mistake, and I'm going to switch viewports just so I can just so I can get this from the right view. So I'm going to go to my left view, and I'll make that all right, and uh, and then I'm just going to grab those objects, and I'm going to move them right over top of my ball. Um, I'll go to my light for a moment here and modify it. And I'm going to turn on shadows. And uh, I'm just going to adjust my parameters a little bit by turning down my, my um, hotspot. And now when I render my um, camera view, let's see what I get. Hopefully it's going to be pretty good. So that matte shadow material is looking pretty nice. Obviously, my shadows are a little bit harsh right now. Um, that's going to take a little bit of fine tuning. Now, I don't like how this looks because I've got this perfect ball inside of this video, which is a little grainy. So my next step is going to be to, um, first off, get my shadows right and get my colors right and, and do whatever animation I want to do to this ball. And then it's to render it out as a PNG sequence. So I'll just take you through that very quickly so you can see it. Let's say you've made a little character and he's now going to walk along um, right where this ball is. Maybe he's going to walk right along here and then he's going to turn and he's going to go into that door. Okay, so I'll have to do a little bit of figuring out exactly where I am, right, um, in the scene. And if I just switch over to wireframe, I can, I can see. I can probably figure that out where I'm going to be. Okay, where I'm going to be looking, right? So then I want my ball to be, you know, around here when I... Uh, when I look, whatever I want to animate, I want to get my materials right, I want to get my shadows right. And once I've done all that, uh, just go to your render setup and uh, make sure you render to the same resolution that you're working in. That's very important. Um, so I'll just do NTSC TV and I'll do, uh, there we go, 720 by 480. And uh, under save file, I'm going to turn on files and I'm going to change this to PNG and uh, hallway test. Perfect. I'll call it hallway test. And when I do my setup, oh, cancel, um, it's going to ask me for 48-bit uh, RGB and that's going to render it out for an alpha channel. Okay. So we'll uh, pick that up for the next tutorial. Um, I'm going to do some animation and some modeling and get something really cool walking along on the floor here so I can look at it. And um, it's going to zip into the door uh, before I get a chance to see what it is. And it might peek its head out again. So I'll do all the animation in Max, render out my sequence as a PNG uh, sequence, and um, check back for the next tutorial uh, very soon. And uh, we'll composite that in After Effects and uh, make it look 
kind of cool. Bye-bye.